Today I'm gonna to, I'm gonna make an absolute corker. I'm gonna share with you my top tarot hacks, as I think the modern word is. So this is really top tarot hacks for professional reading, for when you're reading with other people, when you're reading for clients. Hack number one, before the client turns up, do a bridge spread. The bridge spread is the most simple relationship spread. Put down one card for you, one card for the client, and one card for the forthcoming reading. It may not tell you exactly what's going to happen, but it'll give you a feeling for maybe the atmosphere that is already brewing. And also, importantly, it'll take you out of your own ego. So it'll stop you thinking about your day, your assumptions about the client, your fantasies, and it'll put you into this more healthy, ego-less space. Hack number two, very simple, have more than one deck. For example, that one, that one, that one. I usually have three decks ready, and I would say in a one hour or 75 minute reading, you might do three spreads. And so for each spread, you might use a different deck. And this is quite good to keep things fresh. It's quite good if people encounter the same card coming out of different decks. Tarot is a visual experience. It's a, a visually stimulating experience. It's a connection between the visual and the intuition. So if there's two or three different artists on your table with their impressions of the cards, that'll really help. Hack number three, always or almost always, start with the 12 house spread. If you're not familiar with this, I've done a video about it. It gives 12 cards in the positions of astrological houses. If you've got a client who doesn't really know where to begin, this really unlocks the situation. You can talk about the client's financial situation, their relationships, their career, their home life. It really gets things flowing and, and gets things moving. I said almost always. There's a kind of client that comes to a tarot reading because they have lost their way and they are looking for a way forward, but they don't really know where to begin, where to crack things open, where to start the conversation. Now, if this is the client, the client is looking for something. He or she might be looking for energy, for hope, for direction, or for love, obviously. The instructions are very simple. Decide on the significator for the missing thing, the hope or the direction or the energy or the love. Very simple. If it's hope, use the star. If it's love, you can use the lovers. If it's energy, any number of cards, the magician, the chariot. Decide on the significator, shuffle the pack, and then deal 12 piles in the normal 12 house pattern. At the end of which you will have a small pile of cards face down in each position. Look through each position. When you find the significator, that is the house in which the inquiry needs to take place. So if the client is looking for energy, for example, and the significator turns up in the 11th house, for example, then maybe the querent should look for this source of energy in his social life. If it occurs in the 4th house, then maybe he or she should look in the home environment for that. It's a really nice way of beginning. And when you have located the significator, you can take that pile of cards and do a seven card reading with it. You may need to add one card because some of the piles will have only six cards in them. My last important tarot hack for successful readings is always ask for more cards if you're flummoxed by a card. Being flummoxed is not a bad thing. Tarot is mysterious. The unconscious is mysterious. Things often look very odd on the table, but it's about flow. 
It's about keeping things moving. It's about allowing thoughts to surface in your head. It's allowing words to come out in what you say. So if there's a card that you do not understand and you cannot think of anything to say about it, say to the tarot, OK, I would like illuminating cards for this. Put down two more cards at the side of the card that you don't understand so that instead of being one card, that becomes a triplet. Often triplets are easier to read than one card. Do this as much as you need. Don't fill the table up with cards because then you might feel flooded, but once or twice in any spread, it's absolutely fine and it's highly recommended. Those were my top five tarot hacks for successful professional tarot readings. You have been watching Robert Farrow's Tea and Tara coming to you not live at all from Berlin Neukölln. See you later. Bye.